Buenas semana, day. Thank you, everyone, for being here. The Committee on Self-Determination Historic and Historic Preservation will now convene the, for this public hearing. Today is Tuesday, April 26, 2022, and it is currently 528 in the afternoon. For the record and in accordance with the open government law, public notices were sent out via email to all senators, stakeholders, and the Guam Daily Post on Tuesday, April 19th, 2022, and the second notice on Friday, April 22nd, 2022. Notice of today's hearing was also available on the Guam Legislature's website. With me today, I'd like to acknowledge Senators Joanne Brown, who is the primary sponsor of the bill. Thank you, Senator, for being here, and Senator Teletide, we thank you. This public hearing is to provide discussions on bill number 208-36 COR, introduced by my colleague, Senator Joanne Brown, Senator Frank Boss Jr., and Senator Tello Tidegui. Bill number 208-36 COR is an act to repeal. Sorry. Is an act to repeal and reenact subsection 76602 of Article 6, Chapter 76, Title 21, Guam Code annotated relative to restoring funding collected for building permit fees to the Guam Preservation Trust Fund. I would now like to welcome the prime sponsor of the bill to provide an opening statement for this bill. Senator Brown. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, and certainly uh, appreciate the opportunity to have this bill heard today and certainly to all uh, the members of our community that are here to testify with regards to Bill 208-36. My primary focus in introducing this bill uh, had to do with a concern when I became aware with one of the bills that were introduced in the Guam Legislature to fund the reconstruction of, of one of our one of our older schools, the FQ Sanchez School. Uh, it was much to my surprise, Madam Chair, to find out that the Preservation Trust, which for many, many, many years had a funding source, um, I was very concerned when I found out several legislatures ago the funding source was essentially cut in half, which allowed the Preservation Trust to exist but did not allow them to continue with their mandate, uh, which, which in terms of contribution to our community and the, not just the revitalization of our culture and our history and our people, uh, but just the broad spectrum of the valuable work that they do that on their own were quite successful. Uh, since the creation of the Preservation Trust 32 years ago, uh, with the passage of our public law and sponsored at the time by Elizabeth Ariola, Madeline Z. Berdalio, and Theodore Nelson, who are the main sponsors and visionaries of helping put into legislation the creation of the Preservation Trust. Um, they essentially were able to do what they were intended to do and do it quite well. Uh, but, but the removal of half of their funding essentially took away the ability of the Preservation Trust to act independently, which ultimately in several subsequent laws that were passed um, was the ultimate intention. And the trust was very successful with their work. Of course, many of us are familiar with a lot of the older buildings that they have restored, a lot of our historical sites that have been rehabilitated and brought to life in many cases for many of us that, you know, even for those of us that are older, there's still so much about our history and our people our language, our culture, our music, our storytelling, that we still need to know, we still need to revive, and we still need to bring back to life and continue to support. And so the intent of this bill is to restore back the funding to the Preservation Trust to allow them to continue to operate independently as they were created and as they were intended. Um, you know, I understand that the funding was taken out at the time uh, to help fund the museum that had opened. But in all fairness, uh, the removal of their funds was included in a budget act that did not allow for public hearing, public involvement, public engagement, or even the opportunity of the Preservation Trust, its board members, its supporters, to even come forth to the legislature to raise their concern with regards to the impact that this would have on the Preservation Trust. Certainly the, the other funding uh, projects that were authorized as a result of extracting that money from the Preservation Trust you know, are important missions in this government, but I believe that those, those operations can be funded directly out of the GovGuam budget um, and allow the Preservation Trust to go back to its ability to operate independently and have those decisions made by their board with regards to what the priorities are and not politicize what I think is a very important part and component of our island and of our culture and of our history. So with that, 
Madam Chair, I certainly look forward to the testimony and appreciate the opportunity to have this bill heard today. Thank you. Thank you. I would now like to invite Mr. Patrick Lujan, who is the, our SHPO, to give oral testimony. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Wasn't expecting to go first. Do I leave the mask on or? You do? Okay. Um, so, Hafaday Committee on Self Determination and Historic Preservation. My name is Patrick Luhan, the State Historic Preservation Office, Officer. As federally recognized by the National Park Service and the Guam Historic Preservation Officer, a classified position within the government of Guam. Today I am providing testimony opposing Bill 208 36 as currently written. Although I fully support the mission of the Guam Preservation Trust, also known as GPT, restoring the building permit fees back to GPT will have adverse effects to the three agencies currently in receipt of such apportionment the Department of Public Works, the Guam Museum under DCA, and the Department of Parks and Recreation's Historic Preservation Office. Understanding that funds are difficult to obtain, our office is fighting for every resource possible as the frontliners to our cultural and historical preservation efforts on Guam. The creation of the Archaeological Mitigation Fund in Public Law 33-66 was a commitment from the Guam Legislature to help our office with archaeological supplies and resources. It wasn't until 2020-2021 when we finally obtained such funds and it has only been on one occurrence. Now this bill will take that away. We hope that GPT and the three departments affected can all see full support from the legislature. If not, and it is standing as written, I am respectfully opposing this bill. Signed, Patrick Q. Luhan. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Luhan. I will now call on Mr. Joe Kinata to give his testimony from the Guam Preservation Trust. Madam Chair. Hello? Am I on? Okay. I am Joe Kinata, the Chief Program Officer of the Guam Preservation Trust. And uh, Madam Chair, I am, and Senators, I am here to testify in favor of Bill 208-36. And uh, I would like to read my testimony, and I, uh, in support of Bill 208-36, an act to repeal and re and re re reenact subsection 76602 of article 6 chapter 76 title 21 guam code annotated relative to restoring funding collected from building permit fees to the guam preservation trust fund with full restoration of funding collected from the building permit fees i know that the guam preservation trust's board of directors who hold the public's trust will ensure that they are used for GPT's mandated purposes for the betterment of our community. Let me begin by sharing with you and the public on what GPT is and what we are not. First, GPT is not a government agency. We are a public nonprofit established by the 20th Guam legislature in 1990. We inherit a board that is appointed by the governor and confirmed by the legislature with the oversight chairperson on historic preservation sitting as our ex official member on our board. We may seem different from the government, but we still share several commonalities. For example, although we are exempt in several provisions, we have adopted procurement regulations of the government of Guam. We are subjected to submit financial disclosures to the Guam legislature. We must complete financial audits and report them to the public auditor and disclosing it to the public in our yearly citizen-centric reports. We cannot just go out and restore historic sites 
but rather we need a delegation of authority from the Director of Public Works and clearances from the State Historic Preservation Office to do such work. We are not a regulatory agency like the Historic Resource Division, the State Historic Preservation Office, or an office that signs off on permits. We are an organization that partners with that office when it comes to providing preservation treatments to our historic sites. We cannot sign as an official signatory on a programmatic agreement, only reserved to the federal partner and the SHPO. But we can sign on as a concurring party, stepping up to provide our assistance and helping represent the voice of our preservation community stakeholders' concerns when dealing with the issues surrounding the National Historic Preservation Act and other policies concerned with public consultation. We are not the historic preservation policy makers as we ensure our strategic plans follow the policy of this legislature and the Guam Historic Preservation Office state plan. We are and have always worked closely with our government partners and transparent with our financial affairs. But as a public nonprofit corporation, one thing that really separates us from the government is that we are exempt from the Executive Budget Act. We don't come year after year like other agencies do to request funds for each fiscal year. And for many years, we didn't need to. We have been able to manage well when we were allotted 100% of our building permit fees and bringing those funds with our investment policy. We have an investment policy that helps us grow funds that you give us. Our investment policy was needed as the cost of construction since 1991 has not decreased, but rather increased substantially and shows no sign of slowing down. Likewise, many of our historic sites are only growing older by each day. And when, it's, when it is time for us to intervene, the cost to do so will only have increased. So to help reach our capital improvement goals, our investments have allowed us to grow the funds we receive, but this can only be successful when we receive 100% of all collected building permit fees. Since the cut six years ago, we had to draw down from our investment to cover all our obligation and any financial investor will tell you that once you start doing so, the funds eventually will not grow as fast and continuous drawdown will, only, will, will one day exhaust those investments and it will no longer grow. Additionally, while having successful and clean audits yearly, it has been noted in our management discussions and analysis and audit report with the public auditor since 2015 and yearly up to today that a decrease in allotments and lower amounts in our investments will create financial challenges for the trust to operate. These reports and analysis have been shared with the legislature yearly and for the past six years. We have, like other partners in the government, found ways to reduce costs and work with that reality. While we have been succe successful to be awarded outside grant funds to help support preservation projects, it is not enough to cover the existing preservation needs our island faces. And now we are here today because our current quarterly allotments and investment accounts can no longer cover the cost of preservation treatments such as restoration, rehabilitation, and reconstruction projects that we have in queue. Dear Senators, the Guam Congress building was really 
the last capital improvement project that we were able to complete so that you can conduct the challenging work needed to move our island forward in a building designed for the future and to be both environmentally friendly and respectful of our history. And we, think, and we thank you for giving us that opportunity. We were shocked that even before we turned over the keys to complete the project, the 33rd Guam legislature decided to cut our percentage of funding by half in the budget law for fiscal year 2015 by crafting the language that cut our percentage to 50% within the miscellaneous provision section of the bill. This was done without any public discussion or consultation with us or our board members. Consultation is an important word in preservation community. We hear that word so much, especially when our community deals with the US military buildup. We say things need to be transparent and open so that we can provide meaningful public consultation. At GPT-2, we understand that consultation is important. And we even train our public to learn about Section 106 process to understand their roles in providing meaningful consultation. Several senators in this legislature have attended our trainings. While stressing our important consultation, how important consultation is, as an organization who also believes in the spirit of Inafa Malik, we were saddened that we were not provided proper consultation when it was determined to reduce funding. Saddened even further that our preservation funds, though by statute was not to be used for government operations, was taken for such purposes and to destroy public buildings and restore non-historic structures. My dear senators, I do not want to use your valuable time to tell you what we have done these past 30 years to tell you why you should restore our funds. I will submit our strategic plans which illustrate what we have accomplished. We are proud of the past 30 years. What I want to stress is that we have several projects left outstanding in need of funding for our community residents. Preservation work is needed for F.Q. Sanchez Elementary School, the Aganya Cathedral Bell Tower, two historic homes in Inalohan, the George Flores House and Benny San Nicholas House. In Haganya, we have the Rosario Luhan House and Archbishop Flores House. We also have conservation work and heritage projects needed to develop GPT's Atantano and Hila and Heritage Preserves to help save our natural resources and bring our proper environmental stewardship, bring about proper environmental stewardship for our community residents. These projects combined will cost over $20 million. We cannot do this alone in our current financial condition. We even had to prioritize our projects in queue, and for the first time in our organization's history, we had to come before this legislature to request funding for the F.Q. Sanchez School restoration this past September. And these are just the projects that we have invested in prior to the cut so that they uh, be shovel ready, meaning that we invested in these projects to uh, provide the architecture and engineering design to provide the, all the preliminary work that it is shovel ready as we, as we get the funding. More projects to protect our historic sites will come forward soon and will be in need of funding. Our current funding mechanism cannot sustain the rising costs of construction and without any change, it will make it difficult to protect our sites from any adverse effects. Some preconceived thoughts may express that funding for GPT is not important at this time in our community. Some might say it isn't a priority. It is not a, a public health issue. 
It isn't a public safety issue. It isn't a public education issue. It isn't an economic development issue. But I say to you, we are all that and more. Many historic sites are on public lands and parks where our families walk, swim, and conduct outdoor activities. When we teach our residents cultural practices, we promote public health to engage their whole person to live healthy. When we restore and stabilize historic structures, we keep our community safe by helping prevent those structures from causing harm to themselves, their family and friends, our visitors to our island, and other private businesses and properties in our communities. When we create educational programs for our students and support public education and research in archaeology, architecture, Chamorro culture, history, and planning, we invest in our public's education. And finally, look at major tourist destination, destinations, and you'll find that the areas that are of interest are seeing revitalization, our historic districts and sites. By investing in Guam Preservation Trust, you are investing in our public's health, education, safety, and economic development. Finally, as mentioned earlier, in the spirit of Inafa Malik, I hope that we can involve Guam Museum, the Department of Public Works, and the Guam Historic Resource Division into this consultation or conversation. Let us not repeat the actions of the past and not have them be consulted should their funding source not be in need of a new funding source. Let us work together to see how fully investing in the Guam Preservation Trust and using our nonprofit status can work for the community's advantage to remedy any effect that they may experience. In closing, I want to use this time to, as an opportunity to recall the vision of the Trust's pioneers, Bill 486-20, that became Public Law 20-151, which established the Trust, was championed by the late Senator Elizabeth Ariola, former Senator Madeline Berdallo, and former Senator Ted Nelson back in 1990. Interestingly, the three co-sponsors received the full support of that legislature and all 21 senators signed on the bill. It is my hope that 31 years later, we are given the opportunity again to see their wisdom and equip our organization to once again save our sacred sites and treasures. Today, Bill 20836 will do just that and help GPT fulfill its mission in preserving and protecting Guam's historic heritage, cultural heritage. And I thank you, the senators of the legis this legislature, for being our new pioneers. And I ask for your full support for this bill being heard today. We have done so much in the past 30 years. And if past, imagine what we can do in the next 30 years to come. Thank you, Mr. Jokinata. I will now call on Mr. Melvin Wanpat Borja from the Department of Chamorro Affairs. Mr. Wanpat Borja. Sidusmasi. Buenas and half a day, Senators and members of the committee, Guahusi Melvin Wanpat Borja, and the President of the Department of Chamorro Affairs. I offer this testimony in regard to Bill 208-36, which proposes that 100% of the building permit fees are given back to the Guam Preservation Trust. As a representative of an agency that is entrenched in the field of preservation, we share the concerns of the Guam Preservation Trust and support the effort to properly fund their operations and the important work they do for Guam and her people. However, this work should not come at the expense of the Department of Tamoro Affairs, nor the State Historic Preservation Office, or even the Department of Public Works. Each of us are also recipients of, of a percentage of the building permit fees, and we are highly dependent on these funds for our operations and our efforts to uphold our respective mandates. I do not oppose the intent 
of Bill 208-36. However, I cannot endorse this bill without clear language that guarantees our other departments in the preservation field are not negatively impacted. Until such language is included, the Department of Tomorrow Affairs cannot provide support for this bill because the current language does not include reassurances to that end. Our projections estimate that the impact of this bill, if passed into law as written, would translate to roughly $250,000 worth of lost funding for the DCA, particularly for the Guam Museum, which also houses some of our most valuable national treasures. If preservation is a genuine concern for the legislature, then this bill would not propose funding increases for GPT at the expense of DCA, SHPO, and even DPW. I implore this body to consider the negative impact that Bill 208-36 would have on DCA, SHPO, and DPW, and introduce appropriate amendments that ensure additional resources are committed to these entities so that each of us can properly fulfill our respective mandates. Suzuas Masi. Thank you very much, Mr. Juan Pat Borja. I'll now allow my colleagues, I'll open up the panel. If there's any questions or concerns, we'll start with the sponsor, the primary sponsor of the bill, Senator Brown, if you'd like to ask the panel any questions or share anything. Thank concerns. you very much, Madam Chair. I, I do want to comment before I do ask questions. I certainly understand the position that's been brought forth um, by Mr. Lujan and Mr. Juan Pat Borja with their respective uh, responsibilities in their department. But, you know, the irony is not that historic, the Preservation Trust is taking away from either of your entities. The reality is your entities took away funding that was always intended for the Preservation Trust, at least by previous legislation. Um, the irony on top of that is the 33rd Guam Legislature in a Budget Act uh, taking 50% of essentially the operational funds of the Trust, funds that were used to actually invest in historic preservation only leaving the trust to exist, to be able to fund its office and its staff, but not its mission. Uh, so that's the concern. And also, I, you know, and, and Mr. Kanata outlined that quite well, is that it is not a government entity. It's not a department or agency. Uh, and I think that's very unique, and I think that's actually a very good thing, because the Preservation Trust, through their efforts over the last 30 plus years, have demonstrated their capability to do the mission that they were designed and intended to do. And they've done quite successfully. I mean, the you know, legislative intent in this bill is far longer than the actual legislation of what we're amending. And that's just a, a portion of their success story. There's so much more that they've done than even what is listed here. And I'm sure by policy direction, hopefully the majority of the legislature want to continue to see the Preservation Trust do the work that it does and be viable. Uh, government agencies can be funded out of the government of Guam budget as we do the rest of the government as the bulk of your agencies are funded now. So I don't see that as an issue. I think the timing of hearing this bill is very beneficial simply because we now are entering into the public hearing process for the budget for this upcoming fiscal year. And I'm mindful of that. The intent is not to leave anybody else out in the cold. Certainly, Mr. Borja, you, I appreciate the fact that you came to meet with me to discuss this issue. And I certainly would be an advocate of, of ensuring, at least in my vote on the floor, if we can ensure that the, your entities or the funds that you will not have as a result of restoring funds back to the Preservation Trust will be addressed in the budget as the bulk of your current operations are. But I think the work of the trust, the success story that they have demonstrated consistently to me is a priority and it's something certainly in my role as a policymaker uh, that I want to continue to support because not the rest of the government is not always as successful in doing that. And this is one case where the vision was put into law and it was put in place in a way that the preservation trust through their efforts, certainly Mr. Kanata, you've been there pretty much the life of the trust with your board, uh, you've delivered. Not everybody can do that every year that comes before this legislature for funding. And I wanna see that success story continue. It's not to take away from the work that's being done at Parks and Recreation or the work that's being done at the museum, but I think the decision was made to fund the museum uh, and they were looking for a funding source and unfortunately they took it away from the Preservation Trust, which I do not support. I'm very much an advocate for the work that they do and their funding and certainly for the time I'm here I will continue to advocate for the Preservation Trust. So uh, just to relate to both of you, if that is the main concern is, are you gonna lose funding and not be able to have that available? Um, 
my position is that your operation should be funded out of the appropriations for the general fund as we do everything else. Is that, would that be a concern to you if the 250,000, Mr. Borja, that you currently receive funding for be provided? Would that be an issue where the source of it is? If you receive it in your budget, it doesn't take away from your operations? Can you just say it for the record, please? No, I don't think that the issue is where the funding comes from. I think it's a matter of are we equipped with the proper resources in order to fulfill our mandate. You know, I think I, uh, to be quite frank, Senator, I wouldn't be here if there was language that gave us reassurances that we are not being cut short. And I understand that the, you know, the fundamental problem right now is that, you know, we, the museum, we, the museum, were, you know, took funds from GPT. Uh, which I acknowledge is, you know, not the best way to do it, but do two inappropriate actions make it right? I don't necessarily believe so, you know? So I, I think that the major issue for myself, I can, it sounds like uh, Shippo is on the same page as we are, is it's less about, you know, whether or not it comes from the building permit fees, but whether or not we have it. Um, you know, I appreciate the support for, you know, to advocate for us on the general fund, but I mean, the reality is, is that everybody is looking for funding out of the general fund. And, you know, one vote out of 15 doesn't necessarily make me feel a certain level of comfort about the reassurances that, you know, we will continue to be funded, that we will continue to have the resources that allow us to effectively deliver on our mandate. And, you know, I, I just, I feel like, you know, the three of us here are, are all, like I said, very entrenched in the field of preservation. It's not, you know, we, I, I think that it's, it's a sad day that, you know, we're, we're over here kind of arguing over who's getting what. If all of us were properly funded, then it's a non-issue. And I know that that's, a, you know, an ideal situation that is not often the reality. But I just, you know, I don't think that it's right that the, you know, these three major entities that are entrenched in the work of preservation are kind of being pitted against each other, for lack of a better term. Well, unfortunately, the current members here didn't create that situation. Um, and certainly, I look at it, you're assuming there's only one vote. That's your assumption. Ultimately, the decision will be made by the legislature with regards to funding for the government of Guam. And I, I, I think very much that the support will be there for historic preservation. I'll be very surprised. Trust me, I'll be very surprised who will stand on the floor of that legislature and not advocate to fund, at least in this current legislature, the operations of the Preservation Trust. So I understand your concern. And as I mentioned, that ultimately will be the decision of the body with regards to funding. I'm simply saying I would be an advocate to ensure that your, what funding is taken away from the building permit fees would be provided through direct appropriation, which is no different than the bulk of your operations of what is funded currently. Mr. Lujan, also for you, would it matter as long as you receive your, your funding for your, the work that you're currently doing? Uh, no, it won't. Um, like I said in, in my testimony, I'm in full support of the mission of, of GPT, right? I mean, if they, but also the same concern as Mr. Juan Pat Borja has, you know, you, you take this portion away, it, it adversely affects our operations, which, you know, we're, we're distinctly in line of, of what they are doing. So I think it was a discussion also within the board themselves as far as, you know, taking one to give to the brother, right? Taking some money from, from this sibling and giving it to that sibling and analyzing that situation. Um, as much as we have very related missions, we're also very different in my sense, being the enforcement portion, the per permitting reviews, review and compliance, pretty much the front end, actually almost cradle to grave as far as what our office um, uh, exhibits. And so even the $100,000 uh, that is allocated off of the archeological mitigation fund goes a long way for us despite the limitations that the statute had implemented, um, not being able to hire an, uh, an employee, having to go to certain, certain aspects of, of operations, and, and we've been doing that, even though we've only collected one year out of the potential six years since this, the enactment of the, of the bill. So 
Again, this is not um, opposing GPT in any shape or form. I, we, we're here in full support because that is, that is what we should be doing. However, uh, like Mr. Wampe Borja said, the, the, the current bill doesn't describe how we're gonna backfill the impact from the three agencies. Um, and I'm interested to hear from DPWA, they're, uh, they're not here right now, but you know, I'm sure they're the ones that are actually doing the collection, right? And, and doing the permitting process. So I'm sure that perspective is also very important into, into what this bill uh, uh, entails. So that's all, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a frank discussion to, to come here. Um, you know, the, the onus is gonna be on, on, on the legislature to see how we can do that. When you say, Senator, that you will support historic preservation, um, I'll, I'll be frank with you, it, it, I kinda hold, hold, a, hold my breath on that because when it does come down to, you know, the budgeting, it doesn't always result in to what is being said. And so we're left with, you know, for instance, we were, a lot of our positions were uh, tourist attraction fund funded. And then what happened to COVID, you know, and that just, you know. That's off, the reality of the that's world, That's reality. Right? What can we and do? And so, exactly. Except try to figure out how can we rebuild now. Right. Um, but, but, you know, this mitigation fund kind of gives us at least a little bit of, of breathing room to at least buy supplies for my staff, you know, to go out there because it's, I can't hire somebody. So at least I can, I can buy hard hats and, you know, uh, supplies for them to go out in the field and make these appropriate site visits. Um, you know, you take that away and with no, uh, funding to backfill that then it's it's going to be it's going to be difficult for us to again uh enable our what we're supposed to be doing on our mission so nothing against gpt we we totally support their mission um but it the question is okay what about those who are left whether whether it was rightfully done or not in the 33rd legislature obviously you know the 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 move was was there was a reason behind that, and that I can't explain. However, you know, based off of that, how you guys are going to uh, adjust accordingly, you know, we're here to just give us, our, give our perspectives for you guys to hear us out. No, and I, I appreciate that. And, and Mr. Kanata, for you, what's your response to the positions of the, your, these two government agencies with regards to what I look at is actually turning a wrong back into a right by restoring your funding back, because I am concerned about the survivability of the, of the Preservation Trust if we do not readdress returning funding for your operations. Senator, I, um, I really have to say that over the years, uh, there has been an attempt to get the funding source from, from GPT years before. Uh, we were able to sit with the museum before. At that time, it was uh, uh, Tony Palomo, who was the director of the museum at that time. And we explained to Mr. Palomo that, you know, if you're going to take a percentage off of uh, the funding source, if that percent is 10% or even 25%, you know, you have to understand and, and even DPW, way back then, they, they wanted to take a percentage off. But you have to understand, if you get, take a percentage off from the funding source, remember that that is dependent upon development. So if there wasn't, if nobody wanted to build in a couple of years, you know, substantial development, then you will not get your, your allocation. You will not get your monies. Are you willing, I mean, the, the, it's difficult for the government to say, okay, employees, you're out. We don't have the money. It is difficult for them because every year, the cost of staff or the cost of everything increases, even if you're allocated only that percentage. And if, if, if you are going to, 
depend on, on the building permit fees, uh, you're going to go back to the legislature again and say, we didn't get enough funding from the building permit fees. We want to ask for more money. Whereas with the Guam Preservation Trust, we only have three, four employees. Everything else is outsourced. And if the funding level decreases, and we've done that before, that means our outsource contracts would decrease. And we adjust according to the, the, um, the revenues that the building permit fees get. You know, in, 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 um, in respect to the agencies, you cannot adjust that. You have to stick to the same um, uh, budget that you've created to begin with. And so this is something that we really need to look carefully. It's, it's, it's how we run our organization is dependent on how much um, uh, revenues come in. You know, and, and, and it's, it's an example, just the last five years, you know, we were able to, to fund programs, we were able to go out and get grant funding but to fund capital uh, uh, projects, we just have no, no funding at all. Um, because, uh, again, that the decrease of, of uh, uh, construction on Guam uh, is going to equate to the decrease of revenues with the permit freeze, you know. And what we've been doing with the, the museum back then when um, uh, Mr. Palomo wanted a percentage, well, was we said, well, if there's anything that the museum needed, that they can write a grant for it. The trust can, is we issue our grants. And so we did that for, for, for many years. We were the ones that funded the archives, uh, uh, protecting the, ar the ar archivals as well as the artifacts. Uh, we funded the, uh, the uh, security cameras. We funded the computers that they needed uh, for, for, uh, for inventory. Um, and, and it's audited. We make sure that everything is in, in line and they get their funding and everything is, is good. Uh, but uh, now that now that they have their funding from the from the uh, building permit fees, they don't come to us for. Well, Mr. Kanata, I'm, I'm going to wrap this because I know my colleagues may have other uh, comments and questions. But I find it ironic that one of the last major projects funding was the restoration of this building. Uh, for our former colleagues that were here, not to be mindful of that. I mean, this building sat idle for almost 25 years. Uh, before it was restored, and as you said, not just to recognize the history of it, but also to make a modern building that certainly we can all be very proud of for, for our people. You know, this is the house of the people, and uh, the work that was done by the Preservation Trust to bring this building back to life is quite impressive and quite outstanding. Um, and I, I think we're obligated to address the survival and the future viability of the Preservation Trust in ensuring that uh, the funding is restored because I, I very much see that while I, I don't promise the moon, I would want to look specifically at the current amounts that are funding your, your respective agencies for you, Mr. Wampat Borja and Mr. Lujan, to work with the budget chair to see how we can address funding your needs because your needs are just as important. I think it's unfortunate we didn't create the situation, but I'm hoping we can correct it so that collectively all three of your entities can continue to do the important mission that you do. So with that, Madam Chair, thank you again for the opportunity to ask questions and comment with regards to this bill. Thank you, Senator Brown. At this mo moment, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of my colleague, Senator Moylan. Senator Moylan, thank you for joining us. Uh, Senator Tello do you have any questions or concerns? Situs Masi, Madam Chair, for the opportunity. And then thank you, gentlemen, for being here tonight. I know it's late, so I won't be, uh, make this too long, but uh, greatly, I want you to know too, I'm, I greatly appreciate all the hard work you're doing to preserve our culture and our heritage. 
Um, but it was a sad day, as you said, Mr. Wampat. It's a sad day, not pegging us. The sad day happened when they took this funding away from the Guam Preservation Trust. Many senators that got together to create this law, um, it was intended to support an agency. And then I think in 2015, when the funding was moved or, you know, divided up was because it was a difficult time during the 2015 on, fun, on budget. And I guess they were trying to find some money elsewhere, you know, still from Peter to pay Paul kind of scenario. And, and that was a sad day when that happened because the intention for something like this, uh, which is not a line agency that can come to the legislature to ask for funding, um, it's, it's uh, disheartening, you know, to hear that the two of you here, but you know, I've got testimonies here uh, from a lot of people, David Lewitz, Ali Cruz, uh, Zena and Nicholas Ruz, uh, Lawrence Borja, uh, tons of these that came in uh, to support this and nothing against this bill at all, uh, to bring it back to where it was. Um, and I also later on would like to just read in Polly Eric Forbes' testimony too into the record. He, um, but th that being said, you know, um, I too believe that's important to, to fund your agencies so that you can do your, your job and, and uh, provide the service to our community. Uh, I'd like to ask Chamorro Affairs, um, did you receive any ARP funding um, the ARP funding from the governor, that's the uh, $580 million that was given to the governor. Did you receive any funding there? Yes, we did. And how much was that amount? Uh, approximately 1.8 million. 1.8 million, oh, 1.850730, so you had 1.8 million that you received. Correct. And you received all that funding. Excuse me? You received all that funding. You, you received all the funding. It's uh, been in your bank, you got yes. it? Okay, great. Um, Historical Preservation Trust have, um, okay, that's the restoration. Well, Mr. Kanata, has GPT received any money from that art funding? No. Sorry? S Senator, we did not receive any ARP funding. Okay. So, um, what impact, if any, did, did the decrease in the allotments that were given to you uh, prior to um, in the 33rd where they took it away? What kind of issues, other than coming to the legislature to pay for certain things like you asked us for three point some million dollars, three point five million dollars for the revitalization, and it was mentioned earlier in your testimony that you would have been able to if, if that allotment kept coming to your agency like it was intended to. Um, what other impacts will it cause? In in short, I, okay. I do not understand what you're Well, is the there question? a continuation of the projects that you are doing right mm -hmm. now that has suffered because of the loss of the funding? We had, we had just, I, in my testimony, I indicated that there are capital projects in queue, specifically uh, uh, homes in, in Alohan, mm -hmm. homes in, in Hagatnya, uh, and the, uh, the Cathedral Bell Tower. Okay. Uh, uh, those are just in queue. We do have other projects, uh, such as the Atantano Heritage Preserve, as well as uh, hopefully the Hilaan Heritage Preserve. And we are looking at about $20,000 uh, for the next 10 years that we will be needing those monies. Okay. Um, well, thank you. And just uh, wanted to read this into the record, the testimony from Polly Eric Forbes. And he writes, Dear Senator Nelson, please excuse my inability to present at the public hearing, but I respectfully submit the following testimony in support of Bill 208-36. When I first heard many years ago that the law that created the Guam Preservation Trust would fund the works of the GPT, GPT for a percentage of the building permit fees collected by the government of Guam, I thought the idea to be, to be inspired from above 
As Guam builds in its pres presence, new buildings in turn support the preservation of the old, our treasured structures of historic and cultural significance to our island and our people. We cannot stop the march of progress, but progress in turn can preserve as much as humanly, humanly possible those links to our past that make us who we are. With all public institutes, while all public institutions are in need of funding, the Guam Preservation Trust unique funding source is not just a matter of fiscal appropriation, but also a matter of justice to preserve the past through the revenues gained for building in the present. Thank you for your time, Samantha Sipali, Eric Forbes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator. I was actually um, going to allow Guam Preservation Trust to read the testimony, but thank you for reading, for reading it for us. Okay, Senator Moylan, do you have any questions or comments? Thank you, Mr. Madam Chair, and uh, thank you to the panel, Mr. Kanata, Mr. Luhan, Mr. Wompat Borja, for your testimonies. Uh, Mr. Kanata, I, thank you for explaining the situation where you're at, and very um, fortunately poor for the CIP programs that uh, you wanted so hard to fund. Uh, I appreciate you giving us information about the grants as well, but uh, at the same time, we also know that uh, you know, our government at, at this point has some money that we can uh, properly share. Uh, we're, we're at that point of over $61 million over projected uh, budget. Uh, of course, the, the governor has transfer authority, and, and then we had the American Rescue Plan funds as well. Um, I'm sure we can help out uh, in such a way that we do not take away from any other departments with Mr. Luhan and Mr. Wampat Borja. Um, so working together and pointing out these I ideas, I, I think it's a very workable solution that we can have at this time in our situation. And as we grow forward and move past this pandemic, we, I'm sure we can do the correct thing as well to properly fund you regularly. But I, I see no reason why we can't uh, do something right now for you without hurting these other agencies. So I, I thank you all for your uh, presentations. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Moylan. I want to thank all of you for being here today. Uh, I want to thank you for your testimonies. I believe that this is an opportune time. We are currently addressing the budget for the government of Guam. I believe that we can find an equitable way to find a common ground for Guam Preservation Trust and the SHPO's Office and Department of Chamorro Affairs. I look forward to working with each and every one of you so that we can find the middle ground um, to come to a final solution that that supports everyone's initiatives. Okay, now that we have exhausted all the items on the agenda. Uh, we have exhausted all the items on the agenda. It is 621. We now adjourn this public hearing. Thank you very much.